I did this one. Uh, hi, I'm with uh, Mirosh Nichenko. Uh, Miro. Miro. Miro, yes. Yeah, that's that's a better way. Miro, how how was the World Cup 2017, and do you think the rightful person won it? Uh, well, it, it's uh, maybe not me to say because, uh, as you know, I've been there only for semi-final and final. Uh, well, everybody said already it's, it's the strongest World Cup ever. Yeah. Um, well, I think it's well deserved. I mean, one can argue it's a bit of a lottery anyway. Not like you play two games and basically one one bad move means you're out. That's what happened to to Magnus. That's what happened to many many other guys. Yeah, but. I mean, in the end, yes, it's not only the chess skills, but I, I would say mental strength and, you know, so I, I think he fully deserves it. So Levon, that, that's very interesting. First of all, he's, he's well, well, it's not first. I mean, people, one more time, probably had admitted this. He won the cup for the second time. He's the, uh, the first in history, yes. right? Funny enough, I was playing in the first World Cup he won oh, really? in 2005. Yeah. Okay. Did you play with him by any no, chance? No, no, <laughs> no. I just lost my match in the first round. Okay. And uh, you saw the finals at a very close quarters. Uh, do you think? What do you think about Ding Liren as a player and as an opponent? Well, it's yeah. That, that's probably uh, how it happened that he lost in the final. That Lebon has somewhat more experience. That's it, because it was it was an even match, and, and everybody's seen this. Everybody's seen this, and what I personally adore about Ding Li Ren, I mean, his yesterday's interview before before the tiebreaks, like he he admitted himself, Levon played better chess, and I'm really lucky to to make those draws. I mean, the guy's adorable, and he's really, really, and I can stress it again, a fantastic chess player. So we never know when he's going to stop. I mean, he won Moscow Grand Prix, and he won a lot of other tunes and he will uh, win again i mean that's yeah and a lot of people actually betting on Wei being the you know the next world champion the first champion from china something like that i'm not quite sure about these guys because Ding Li Ren is a, he's a fantastic player you being uh, you watching the game so closely i think you are the right person to comment on that that Ding Li Ren is uh, really right up there yeah with the best now you could say he's as good as say Wesley So, Karuana and this group? Uh, well, it's really, I mean, it's very hard to speculate about the difference of this place. Like one is number three and the other one is number 12 or something. I mean, I believe Dean won a bit of rating, so he might be back to top 10 again. Yeah, it's really hard to compare, but he definitely be belongs to this league, right? And uh, if I imagine a match of say 10 games with any of these guys and probably Magnus included I would not really pick my favorite I mean the, the guy the guy is really strong I mean, the guy is really strong okay and uh, Miro you have now uh, established yourself as one of the best chess commentators uh, in the thanks world thanks for that <laughs> uh, what what do you think is are the important qualities that one require to become a good commentator uh, well I think I've, I've been given an advice by someone and Possibly that being DJ, Tenhuizendam, I mean the, the, the chef editor of uh, New Chess. Yeah, that when you talk to people, you kind of have to remember you have 50, sometimes 50,000, sometimes more, sometimes less, but uh, anyway, you have thousands of people online. And if you have two grandmasters talking to each other, it's like 100, 100 of audience who would understand this. So you kind of have to explain every move. And that's what I'm trying to do. So to ask basic questions, not to say, okay, here White has two bishops, it's better. I mean, but why? I mean, because a lot of people just don't understand why. So I'm trying to really, I mean, it's not that I'm setting the level down. It's, it don't get me like this. But I'm really trying to explain why I mean, what, what I mean by any assessment or something. And sometimes what, what's interesting in human commentary that I do try to comment on mistakes, how those mistakes are made, because it's very funny when you look at a chess bomb or whatever, and you see the red move, the, the mistake, and people at home, they think, oh, we are so clever, and those grandmasters don't understand anything. But to kind of understand what's the psychology between this mistake and what he probably was calculating, and 
what I mean, what he did wrong. I mean, I, th I think that's uh, that's good thing to know, and that's what I'm trying to. Because I've been there. I mean, at some point I had like 27, 27 O as a live rating and twenty six ninety on the list. So I mean, didn't really play those big guys, but still, I mean, I wasn't a dec I was a decent chess player. So. Of course, of course, you have so been. I just, I just mean. I kind of feel those moments. I mean, how do you make? Because sometimes it looks ridiculous. Like one of the best in the world, he blunders, and basically blunders in one move. So I'm trying to explain to people. I mean, how those blunders are performed and, and what's behind. It's not like those people who can play chess. You, you've all seen they can. Even though you are like one of the top players in the world at a point, uh, still to analyze these games without engine, it must be really difficult. Yeah, you are never sure about what's happening. You are always in the dark. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's another thing. Yeah, that that's why we always say. I mean, uh, first of all, the human approach is what is interesting. That's what we saw. That's why we are not using any engines. But at the same time, I'm always trying to say. So in my well, actually, I, I kind of thought that I have good intuition, and, and every now and again, I would actually give a wrong variation, but the right assessment of the position. Because well, human tends to blunder, tends to make sure. mistakes, but. I think mostly the assessment of the, of the position I'm giving is more or less correct. So I think that's it. So uh, Miro, to end the interview, I'm going to ask you a tough question. Uh, apart from yourself, who would you consider to be a good commentator in the world of chess? Oh, well, that's a, that's a tough one. No, I mean, I actually do not consider myself as a good commentator, to be honest. I mean, I would go with decent. Uh, and it really... It really depends of whom, uh, as an audience, we are talking about. The, the person whom, whom I would watch, gladly, it's Swedler, the, his duo with Gustafsson, and so on. But I think sometimes they keep the mark a little bit too high. So it's like they would have 1,000 people who understand them and, and another 9,000 who watch them, but they don't understand. Yeah, so I think Yatsi yeah, Seravan is good. And who else? Yeah, that's about it, I think. Yeah, something. I mean, if if I have to uh, name three people who are value, probably, well, I would, I would I have to be honest. They're better than me at the moment. Yeah. So that 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 would be this. So we wish you all the best for your next assignment, which would be the FIDE Grand Prix. Well, most likely. And uh, we will hear you, and we will learn from your commentary. Thank you very much. Thank you. See.